Come on, Midge. He's a good lad. Okay, so today we're walking along a, a track which is actually quite important to Midgey and myself um, because it goes through much of our area and a lot of the things that we like to visit and the walks that we like to take are connected in some way with this route. Um, I'm just going to scan around. It's actually part of the old Ermine Street, which was a Roman road. And um, parts of it are now used as uh, modern highways. And other parts of it are rough tracks like this, where it's been bypassed. And we're at the southern part of the rough track area in our patch, which is close to the RAF College at RAF Cranwell. And those are some of the buildings that you might be able to see there um, of RAF Cranwell, the sports hall, etc. And the top of the, the college tower just showing above the trees. We're gonna take a, a short walk now up this track and uh, then we'll go across, cut back through the woods at the bottom of the slope there. This is one of Midge's favourite walks because uh, it combines the chances of chasing the odd rabbit and running around sniffing in these grass edges with uh, later on charging around in the woods where there are lots of interesting smells for a springer spaniel. I'm hoping to uh, cover quite a bit more of um, this, this track, Ermine Street, as I like to call it. In places, for some reason, it's known locally as the High Dyke, and it's shown as High Dyke on the maps. And the naming of the route seems to alternate between Ermine Street and High Dyke fairly randomly, so I don't really know what the logic is behind that. As you can see, we're making our way now away from the A17. There's quite a few lorries going along that route. It's a busy major road. Busy again now that uh, lockdown's eased a lot. And uh, the farmer's crops are all coming along nicely now. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look around, see what we can see. There's our direction of uh, travel. And to our left here, we've got what looks like a, a bumper crop of onions. They're being irrigated, the spray's going over there. Nice crop of wheat over there. More wheat going right down to the uh, buildings at RAF Cranwell. I'm not sure what we've got in this next field to our left. Let's have a look. Let's have a closer look. Ah, some wood pigeons showing an interest in that, which is possibly a clue. Yeah, this is a nice field of peas. Uh, 
and they're beginning to form nicely now look and I suspect this field is going to be seeing an awful lot more wood pigeons before long there's nothing wood pigeons like better than a nice field of peas peas are a big crop in Lincolnshire um, and the uh, Findus and Bird's Eye factories control most of the uh, pea growing in this area and uh, you might remember the adverts from years ago where the uh, the chap from the the freezer frozen food company would come out and have a look at the field and say right they're ready now and they'd start harvesting and they'd be harvesting them right through the night and keep it going non-stop with trucks taking them off to uh, to the processing factory and it really does happen like that as a youngster I worked on uh, farms that grew peas in North Lincolnshire and uh, when the man from Findus said these peas are ready it was frantic and we got lots of overtime working right through the night hauling loads of uh, peas to the factory or working on the harvester Midge really is in his element. When we're out on these walks, he absolutely loves it. Midge! <whistles> Come on! Here he comes. <laughs> Good lad. Right, there's an interesting little sign here. And uh, as you can see, this stretch is formerly called High Dyke. Site of special scientific interest. Asking people not to, uh, to park or drive on these verges. Right, so we'll carry on down here and we'll, we'll see you in a few minutes time. So we're making our way up uh, High Dyke or Ermine Street as has no doubt many a thousand Roman soldier back in the day and uh, now we're going to take a turn off and go down to the woodland which I believe is jointly owned by the, uh, the farmer and the Ministry of Defence, because it's sometimes used by uh, the uh, students at RAF Cranwell in their training exercises. So as we uh, go down towards this wood, we're walking along the top of uh, that wheat field that we were looking at. And something that always still sort of surprises me now is how short the stalks of wheat are now. And it's been bred to be that way, no pun intended regarding bread, um, but there simply isn't the need for wheat straw these days. Okay, they started burning it in some of the um, biofuel uh, power stations, but there isn't quite so much need now for straw bedding. And you might remember how common a scene it was years ago for um, farmers to be burning wheat straw in the fields rather than collecting it. And uh, of course there were strict environmental restrictions on uh, the amount of straw people could burn and the strict rules as to how it was done. Um, so it made a lot of sense. Not only does it cut down on the um, environmental impact of the straw, but of course with shorter stems on the wheat there's much less chance of the crop being damaged by the elements by wind and rain and so on and uh, even in some of the extreme conditions that we've had in the last couple of years um, you're much less likely to see large areas of flattened crops 
due to the weather. So here we go then, we're heading down to our bit of woodland that we like to walk in and uh, Major's got a real spring in his step because he loves the woods. And here's a plant hated by some but beloved of beekeepers especially and this is Rose Bay Willow Herb a great source of uh, nectar for honeybees and it tends to grow where ground has been turned over and left for a while the seeds I think lie dormant in the soil and when the ground's churned over be it ploughed and then left or sometimes on building sites even, if they haven't been developed straight away, you'll see uh, Rose Bay Willow Herb start to take over, even in, in quite urban areas. My dad used to call it bee food, he loved the stuff. It was a great uh, sign that there'd be plenty for his bees to work on. So here we go then into the woods and this really is Midge's element, he loves these woodlands, any woodlands. So many amazing scents to, to follow and to sniff at. Occasionally wood pigeons and squirrels will appear and he gets very excited about that. so much cooler in these woods than it was out in the sunlight. See the splatter of yellow paint there. And as you walk through these woods you'll see all sorts of signs of where the uh, RAF cadets have been on training exercises. Sometimes this woodland is closed to the public so as not to uh, get too involved with the shenanigans. I think that was the sound of a green woodpecker we heard just then. Don't know if uh, this little microphone I've got clipped to my shirt picked it up. Nice to see Midge walking past a pile of horse poo without stopping for a snack. Dogs can be horrible sometimes. My uh, daughters and I learned to ride horses at the RAF Cranwell Saddle Club. It brings back many a happy memory. Some scary ones too when the girls fell off. I never did fortunately. <laughs> but it's a horrible sight when you see your the 12 year old daughter fall from a horse, winded, doesn't move for a few seconds. It's all good character building stuff though, apparently.
there's obviously been some kind of training exercise going on. Markers on the path there. Come on, Midge. Let's carry on, son. Hello, looks like there's a tree down across the uh, path here. We've had a couple of windy days and it looks like this uh, ash tree, I suspect it's an ash, has come to grief, which is a shame. We're losing a lot of uh, the ash trees from this country now. They're suffering from ash dieback, which is very nasty disease and might well take most if not all of our uh, ash trees eventually. Well, that's quite a break isn't it? So here we are, getting towards the, uh, the end of the woodland now and we'll be breaking out again into the, into the sunlight. Hello, we've got a new little friend here. It's very popular with dog walkers, this stretch, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Hello mate. So we're out of the woods now and uh, the owners of that little dog that we met were a lovely elderly couple who actually had two of the best behaved terriers I've ever seen and even Midge got along with them which is great news because Midge is quite nervous of other dogs. He had a, a bad experience or two bad experiences as a pup. The very first walk we went on we met a, a Great Dane which was extremely boisterous and it knocked Midge over. It just kept charging at him, wanting to play. No aggression, but it was wanting to play and it just knocked him over time and time again. And it left him quite nervous of dogs. And then he, he met another one which was quite aggressive on another walk. So uh, this is progress and he needs to spend more time with dogs. But he got along quite well with those two. So we're heading back up the hill now, away from the wood, heading due west. And when we get to this brow, we should be able to see Ermine Street or High Dyke going across. There we are. Almost there. Fairly short walk today, really. Not much more than a mile, but we'll do another one this afternoon. A few vehicles parked. It's quite popular, this spot, being so close to the main road. But um, the old Roman road, which disappears off over the horizon there and up past that small wood in the distance, continues all the way pretty much into Lincoln, um, obstructed only by RAF Waddington. 
um, and uh, what used to be the Roman road is now a taxiway <laughs> until you get uh, closer to Lincoln and in fact the address of RAF Waddington is High Dyke and the High Dyke continues down crosses the A17 almost where that house is that you can see and goes on down into uh, Ancaster and at Ancaster is the rifle pistol archery and knife and axe throwing club which I'm a member of in fact treasurer of and uh, our club and its rangers are built on the site of an old Roman marching camp where the uh, marching soldiers would stop off along the way to uh, take advantage of the joys of Ancaster which is a fairly small village and give them a rest before they continued on to Lincoln so we're getting close to more people more dogs so I think we'll sign off here now we're going to turn left go back along High Dyke to the car and uh, hope we'll see you again soon goodbye for now Now, here's a challenge for you. For just a few days during July each year, hundreds of acres of my local area show crops with this beautiful pinkish white sheen to them. The white flowers open for just a short time So what is it? A very attractive crop and even lots of local people don't know what it is. We're getting much higher now and that perhaps is a clue. There's a close-up. Any ideas? Right, answer coming up. It's actually opium. These are opium poppies grown for the pharmaceutical industry. And apparently, unlike Asian opium poppies, ours have quite a low yield. So you need industrial processes to extract the active ingredient. 